Hey, it's Aaron from CanvaThews.com, and today we're going to be but not quite like you would expect. We're going to be using dice and dexterity to play in this prototype for Hoop Gods from Board Game Brothers. Hoop Gods was designed by Omari Akil and has wonderful art by Omari's brother, Hamu Dennis. I've introduced it. I'm taking up your time. We need to get into this box. We don't want to go out like nutso. Let's do this the right way. So if I did not mention it before, allow me to reiterate, this is a prototype. So all the components and art and even some parts of the rule set could be subject to change. This is Hoop Gods. It's a 1v1 dice rolling basketball game. Each player will take control of three of the nine available players. There are more forthcoming. Now, is he going to be using dice and juice? Yes, I said juice. Yo, you got the juice now, man. You're not Q, you're going to need juice. And you're going to be using uh, different abilities to score points on your opponent. The game ends when you score how many points you said you want to. If you want to seven, which is most games, when somebody scores seven points, the game's up. Or if you decide to go to 10, the choice is yours. The game can also end uh, if nobody hits the scoring limit by these, uh, these timeout tokens. So if you are low on juice or out of it at the end of your turn, you can take one of these and you can move four juice over from the yellow area into the available area. So let me just go over how the game works. You're going to pick three players. Here we have uh, Wendy Wheels Burner. She is a small character. Her ability is she can move one space after each of your turns. We have Yanni Shutdown Browning. She sort of forces opponents to get rid of a die or makes them spend more juice to do certain moves. She's a medium sized player. One of my favorites. We have Henry uh, four, three web. She needs one less ball rolled in order to succeed at a shot, which is pretty dope. One of my favorites here. If Logan gave me that Jackson, she's a small player. She can pass immediately after a successful steal. We have another uh, small character here. We have Marlon handles the rock and after a successful crossover, he can, push two opponents away one space or push one opponent away two spaces. It's pretty clutch. We have Dina Dunk City Carson also right here. She is, I should have been showing them the whole time, but it wasn't my mistake. She can attempt to dunk from two spaces away. So whereas most characters have to dunk right from in the paint, she can dunk from two spaces away, but she does have to spend a bit more juice to do it, but that's kind of worth it. Another large character is Shane the Pain Abraham. And his ability is once on your turn, move an opponent one space when you move into their space. So he's good at boxing people out. We have Devin Black Hole Newton. He gets to add one die when he rolls for rebounds or blocks. That's important because if you're trying, as I'll show you, you're trying to roll these icons. And if you can add a die, you increase your chance of doing it. And we have another Medium sized character, Rob surpass a lot. Stevenson, he can pass through opponents up to three spaces. So those are the characters we have ready to use. And you would have two, two ability card decks are exactly the same. So you have steel, which requires you rolling two sneaker icons in a hand. We have a block, a rebound, a lockdown, a crossover, a card for shooting, a crossover card and a dunk card. There are two crossover cards. If you look at the cards, some have of half ball icon at the top with a whistle in it, meaning you have to have the ball and be the active player to do this. So if you are trying to go, you're trying to move an opponent out of the way, you're doing this crossover with the ball as the active player. If someone is trying to steal the ball from you, you would do this crossover. They need the exact same icons, three handles essentially, but one is when you're the active, one is when you're not. And then you have steel. So a lot of the game is based on like action and reaction. So if someone's going, so if my opponent says, hey, I'm gonna shoot, then I'm going to spend the required juice to block. So the person shooting would be rolling, would expend, would spend one juice to shoot and hopefully roll these icons. And as a reactionary move, I would have to spend two juice and roll this before my opponent to block their shot. So there's definitely a timing aspect where 
that's where the dexterity comes into play. You are trying to roll those dice as quickly to get those combinations as quickly as possible for your opponent. So you can steal the ball, get the shot off, etc., etc. The only exception, the only time you are rolling by yourself is if you successfully roll to shoot before your opponent can block, if they even attempted to, because you need juice to be able to block. If they don't have any, they can't block. After you do that, that means the shot left your hand. At that point, you would just roll by yourself to see if you make the shot. So if I had Yanni here and she was on this space, this space is a two. So I would need to roll and have two balls come up on the dice in order to make that shot. Gray spots are worth two points. All the black spots are worth three points. So active player, Sakara just passed around to see who's active player is and the tiebreaker. When the game begins, both players are gonna be rolling for a rebound to attempt to get the rebound to get the ball. Whoever does not get it would get the tiebreaker and the tiebreaker could be used to break a tie. Both players roll something at the same time. The tiebreaker could be used for by the one player to say, hey, no, I won. And that could be whatever. It could be a shot, it could be a block, it could be a steal, crossover, whatever. So these are the players. These are the actual balls. Flip them over, it says BGB. Board game brothers. We all we got. All right, so here we have a player board. So you have a place for your six dice to go. The three players that you've picked are right there. I'd recommend you either sort of cascade your abilities like this. So you can see them quickly, or you can sort of lay them out in a grid so you can see what you're doing. There's no secrets, they're the exact same deck. So how it's gonna work is when the game begins, you're gonna have six juice in the available juice section. So here it says available juice. And in the rest area, and in this yellow area, you're gonna have four. So on a turn, if you want to pass, you're always gonna have to move up a juice to the pass section. Passing is something you're gonna to plan to do ahead of time. So you can't move your players and then pass. How passing works is passing can be the first thing you can do, but you can only do it as the first thing. You can't move and then pass. So if you don't wanna do that, you can just go to the green and yellows and you're either spending that to do shooting and dunking and crossovers and stealing, or you're moving. So for each juice you put on one of these spaces here, you can move one or all of your players one space. So if you happen to move up here, let's say I, I, I put three up there, I could move all my players three spaces. And then if I wanted to shoot, shooting costs me one juice. So I spent another juice to shoot and then we will roll to see who's successful. And if I am, I get to move of I get to move a juice back over to be I get to move uh, a juice into the available spot there. If you happen to go all the way out here, you get to pick up a goat card, goat greatest of all time. Goat cards are things like pump fakes and spin moves. They cost juice, but you don't roll. You just do them. So if you want it, if you just want the ball. You could spend a juice if you have this card. It's pickpocket. Player cannot counter it. You just you get it. So if you're adjacent, because even when you're on, even when you don't have the ball, you still have to be cognizant of how much juice you have and where your players are. You can't block a shot for a player that's not adjacent to you. Meaning, you, meaning you need to get one of your players to an adjacent space. So you're still spending juice even when it's not your turn. These are go cards. You would shuffle these up and hand every player one. But if you want an additional one, you have to have enough juice to spend to get out here because after your turn is done, you would move all these down. This one would just come right back down here. If you get to at least one of the red spaces and at the end of your turn, you score, you can move two back into here. You can move two this way and then you'd move and then you could move some back over into the available section. But if you get out here, you also take another go car. Another important thing to note is how a player's size can affect the boosting. Boosting is essentially, for example, when you're shooting, if you have a mid-sized player, instead of just rolling three die to get the shot off, they're able to roll four. So mid-sized players get an additional die to roll to get the shot off, not to shoot to get the shot off. Uh, dunking, larger players have an advantage and will get an extra die for that. For crossovers, you guessed it, small players have an advantage, get extra die for crossovers. 
Uh, same small players get an advantage for stealing. Large players have an advantage for rebounding. Makes sense. Mid-sized players have an advantage for lockdown, which is something you would do in reaction to someone doing a crossover. And for blocking tall players, large players have an advantage for, for blocking. Also, some moves will cost a certain player more just to do. So if you have a small player adjacent to an opponent's player shooting and you want to block, it's going to cost a small player an extra juice to do so. Same for dunking. A small player is going to cost them a little extra juice to dunk. It's also going to cost a large player a little bit of extra juice to do a crossover. In picking your squad, it is recommended that you sort of mix it up, maybe having one small, one mid, one large. But ultimately, the choice is really yours. Let me run you through a couple of turns. Once everybody has placed all their players onto the court, both players are rolling to get a rebound. So we've got three dice and roll them. And whoever gets two sneakers and a basketball first gets a rebound. So let's roll. So let's say player over here rolled two sneakers and a ball first. They would start off with the ball. And it is now their turn. So on your turn, you can do as much as your juice allows you to do. You start off with six juice available. What I would probably do is spend, um, since I have the ball now and I have the character who I want to have the ball, I'm probably gonna move three spaces. So one, two, three, All right? So Henry's gonna move one, two, three. I'm gonna move Wendy, one, two, three, and Marlon handles the rock. Uh, it's gonna move one, two, three as well. I'm gonna shoot. So now that I move there, my opponent probably have moved in closer with which to attempt a block, thinking because I have this character, she's good at shooting, I'm probably gonna shoot. So we both roll. So I say I'm shooting, my opponent is gonna try for a block. So let's see what happens here. I forgot to add the fourth die because the player that is adjacent that is attempting to block is Devin. So he would get an additional die. Also, I think I did forget uh, since I'm shooting, that's going to cost me an additional juice to shoot. And over here, blocking costs two juice. So I have to spend the juice to block. So I roll four as Devin and she would roll three. She ended up getting the shot off first. So now I have to roll by myself to see if I can get the shot off. But Henry's ability allows her shooting succeeds with one less ball roll on final shot. So if I look down at the space I'm in, I'm in a two space, which means she needs, I need to roll one ball on my first roll. This is the difference. When you're rolling for other abilities, you can keep rolling as many times until you get what you need. So if you get what you need, start rolling that die, roll the other one so you get what you want. In terms of a shot, you get one shot. So you got to just hope you roll it right. So she rolls it and she got one ball. So she would get the shot off and she would score three points. Once someone scores, you empty the court and the person who was scored on gets to place their players first and give whomever they want the ball and the game continues. However, I do need to clean up though. So in terms of the juice that I spent, I spent two juice over here to block. I did spend one to move, but it's going to come back down here. Okay. So these are going to come down here. And because I made a shot, it says move two. I think they might be changing that to a one. So I get to move a juice back over and the player who just scored would place their players wherever they want on their side of the court. And the game will continue. Now I'm breaking it out a little bit slower than it would normally go, but normally it's pretty quick. Like you are saying what you're doing and you're glancing at your cars to see, okay, I need a block. So let me get that together. And you're, you're, you're rolling as fast as possible in order to, to be successful. And that is sort of an overview of how, of how who God's plays. And I never play anything quite like it. The art and the component is just dripping with just, just energy. I really like it. I like the way it looks, I like the way the court looks. I love the art. And my wife was walking by watching me um, set up to play. And she just typed my, she looked over and was like, wow, I, she, not only did she liked the art, she liked the fact that it was a mixture of different looking characters, differently abled characters. It, it just all comes together really nicely. So that is an overview of Who Gods. 
It's a lot of fun. It can play pretty quickly. If you're not into the dexterity thing, there are some variants where you can maybe take a little bit slower. As of this recording, Hoop Guys is now on Kickstarter. There's a link in the description. If you like what you've seen, I suggest you back and support Hoop Guys. That's it for me. Take care, wear a mask, stay safe, be blessed.